Can you think of a time when you notice, wow, the old me never could have done this before. Noticing those wins is so important. Welcome to the series. I'm Alessia and I'm so excited you're here. Before we get started, I wanna remind you to subscribe and hit the bell. This series is launching every Monday through Friday throughout the month of January. Remember that this is actually a course being hosted via email, even though the videos are on YouTube. So if you want all the downloads and other materials, sign up at mindovermunch.com slash foodfreedom for free. All of the materials are free. So Food Freedom is the name of this series. And I talked about why it comes from Whole30, Melissa Urban, her book, Food Freedom Forever, really inspired me to just make peace with food. And that was one of the catalysts in me really intentionally trying to heal my relationship with food. For so long, I felt like you know, food owned me and controlled me. And I learned that it doesn't need to be that way and that what I eat doesn't define me. We talked on Friday about, you know, taking the morality out of food. This journey has been over the course of many years, but there were some really neat moments where I just stopped and I knew I was making progress toward my goal of peace, with food. You know, it's not really like you wake up one day and suddenly everything's different. I've talked an email about, I love this saying, transformation requires transition. And like, you know, when you see an Instagram photo and you see like the before and after, you miss everything in between. You don't know what that person went through really and how many downs they went through. And also that every single day in between, it doesn't look that different day to day. It only looks different when you really compare the beginning and the, and the end. And that's how it was in my relationship with food in this journey. Like, you know, beginning to end, it seems like a drastic change, but every single day it's so small. So you really have to pay attention to see it. Today, I thought it would be fun to share some of my food freedom wins and just, you know, bring awareness around this idea of appreciating those so that you can start to notice them in yourself. So remember, part of why mindfulness was so healing for me is it helped me shift my relationships to things around me, including food. It didn't change external circumstances. It helped me respond differently to an experience. And when I respond differently, I don't need to experience the same amount of suffering that I was before. So now I can respond differently to food and health and I don't need to feel so stressed out or like, ah, oh, why can't I figure this out? Why am I doing everything and nothing's working? So. Part of this is stopping and reflecting back along the way. If we don't notice this progress, we're gonna feel like we're never getting anywhere. We're gonna get stuck in judgment. So I really intentionally try to look back and see you know, where I've come. Now, some of these moments might seem small to you, but in the moment, to me, they were huge. You'll have your own, and I hope that you'll share some of them in the comments. So the first one was a McDonald's experience at, it was after a friend's wedding uh, two years ago. And Christian and I left the wedding at, I don't know, it was probably after midnight. And when Christian and I first started dating, which was 10 years ago, no, actually over 10 years ago. Cause we had like a thing and then, you know, anyway. We used to eat McDonald's breakfast like three, four days a week. Like we, it was, it was bad. <laughs> so good. I love, we love McDonald's breakfast, but I haven't eaten it in years. So there was a McDonald's drive through on the way home and we decide, okay, let's just, you know, go get McDonald's. And we got like, I think they had like a two for one deal, like two double cheese cheeseburgers, a dollar each or something. And so we got that. And I remember I'm like looking at it and it looks and smells so good. And I remember like, ah, oh, I used to eat McDonald's all the time and I would love it so much, but it's unhealthy and I don't eat it. I remember I took this bite. I took the first bite and I thought, oh, it doesn't taste like I remembered. It didn't like, I don't know, it wasn't that good. And what I think I realize now looking back is I wasn't just eating it mindlessly, like shoving it in my mouth like I used to. I was like, like, okay, I haven't eaten a McDonald's cheeseburger in a really long time. I wanna be present and enjoy this, right? I wanna bring mindfulness to the experience. And when I did that, I realized it wasn't that satisfying. And so I like took the one bite and then I like stopped for a second and noticed how I felt. And then I took a second bite just to make sure I wasn't crazy. And like, it didn't hit the mark. And in that moment, a part of me was disappointed because I was like, oh, I really wanted to enjoy this burger. Also, it wasn't that good. And now I've eaten some of it. But then I had this win where I was like, this is so cool. I've never started eating a McDonald's burger and not 
finished it. Except for actually in fourth grade ones. We went to McDonald's and Walmart. Our home Walmart had a McDonald's in it. And I ate that burger and I got food poisoning. And I remember telling my mom, I didn't want to eat the rest of it. And she made me eat the rest of it. No, really, she made me eat the rest of it. And then it, all of us had food poisoning that night and couldn't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't plan to include that in this episode. That Thanks, mom! <laughs> no, seriously, I remember taking a bite and being like, Mom, this doesn't taste good. And she was like, eat your lunch. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I didn't finish it. And then I like went up to the trash can and while my mom wasn't looking, I was like, Ugh. and I threw it away because I couldn't eat the rest of it. The Walmart McDonald's. <laughs> my next food freedom win is less of a story, but was still very insightful. And it was my second Whole30 that I did in 2018. So the first Whole30 I did, I was like, oh my gosh, my body is responding like so so insanely to removing these inflammatory foods. And so I was so focused on the physical. The second one, what I realized is so much of my mental st distress, my anxiety, my attitude was affected by what I ate. And this was the first time I really started to consider that my mental health could be connected to food. And this is why I started posting videos like last year I did, you know, foods that may raise or lower anxiety or whatever, food stuff like that. Because I started to see from my, from my experience that food, it wasn't just like there's our physical health and then there's our mental and emotional health. It was combined. And food was actually at the top of the pyramid. Pyramid. So food affects, it's a connector of both physical and mental health. And why wouldn't it be, right? Like we have to eat food to fuel our bodies, to fuel our brains. And it just started to make sense to me. I don't know. And it was something like now I look back and I'm like, why would I ever not think that? Well, because this is how the West is. We'll get there in another, in an, in another video. Anyway, the next food freedom win was the time I gave myself permission to eat an entire bag of white cheddar Cheetos. And this was a couple of years ago too. So I love the white cheddar natural Cheetos. I've loved them for like, I don't know, 15 years since they came out. And the problem is I wouldn't let myself buy them for so long because if they were there, I would eat them all. Like I couldn't stop. Like even if I tried to put some in a bowl, then I would finish the bowl and come back and put more in the bowl. So what would end up happening is I would just eat the whole bag. And every time I bought it, I wouldn't buy it because I knew the whole bag was gonna be eaten. And so one time I was like having a really tough emotional day and I knew I wanted to turn to food for comfort and I had the awareness. And this is something I want you guys to understand that I'm gonna talk about later in the series. It's actually okay to turn to food for comfort sometimes. The goal is awareness and mindfulness. It's not that we can't celebrate with food or comfort ourselves with food, but we have to really be aware when we're doing it and be mindful when we're doing it. And so I had a really hard day and I went to the store and I bought this bag of white cheddar Cheetos. And I remember just saying, I'm gonna give myself permission to just eat this bag of Cheetos. And I sat on the couch and I ate the entire bag. And it was really interesting because I did eat the entire bag, but when I tell myself that I can't have something, I start to tune out and eat really mindlessly. You know, I'm eating out of scarcity. Every every bite I'm like feeling terrible, judging myself like, oh my God, I'm an awful person and I, I don't know what to do. When I bring mindfulness to it, which is non-judgmental awareness of the present moment, I realize my body might not need this and that's okay. We don't need to only eat for fuel. Emotional eating is okay, it can be a tool. I learned this in a program I got certified for earlier last year, I'm gonna tell you about this later. But the idea is to remove the judgment. When we take the judgment away, suddenly it's like, I can feel so much lighter. So I talked about this in the fear foods video I did last year, which was one of the first videos where I talked about my relationship with food and fear stood for foods with emotional attachment and rules. Okay. And so I started to just notice all of my fear foods and give myself permission to eat them. And suddenly all the judgment just dissipated when the permission was there. So, you know, I use the word should as an alarm. There's a saying like, are you shitting on yourself? Because if you're telling yourself you should or shouldn't be doing something, then you're just judging yourself the whole time. And when we remove that judgment, we take the morality out of food because me eating this entire bag of Cheetos doesn't make me good or bad. The next food freedom win was actually just a couple of months ago. And it was, we got a delivery from a local restaurant. Christian and I ordered these two like burrito bowls or something. And it was a, a new restaurant. We hadn't tried it before, but it kept coming up on Postmates. This was like middle of coronavirus. And we're just like sick of ordering the same things all the 
time. So we decided to try this new place. And I wanted, you know, I was like, okay, it's like Tuesday night, so I'll eat something relatively healthy, whatever. And they bring the food and there's no burrito bowls. Instead, there's a, some other bowl, I don't even know what it was, but it was a bowl of a bunch of yummy stuff, a salad and a pizza. And we did not, we did not order this. It was completely the wrong order. Now, it really, my first thought when it came was to a couple of years ago when I was doing Whole30, I had ordered Chipotle and the wrong food came. And during Whole30, you know, you can't eat gluten, you can't eat legumes, you can't eat dairy. And instead of my burrito bowl, I got like a bean burrito. So I couldn't eat any of it. And it was after like the longest, most stressful day. And on top of it, the anxiety of, you know, abiding by these arbitrary rules, the stress I felt, the panic, the resistance, like, oh my God, I'm gonna ruin them. I'm gonna ruin it if I eat this burrito, but I'm so, like I caused myself so much pain and suffering. And so in this moment, I remember, you know, the, the moment where the pizza and all that food I didn't order comes, I thought back to that Chipotle experience and I realized like, wow, I have grown so much because what's happening right now is all this food is here and it's a Tuesday night and I want it to be healthy and I'm just gonna go, okay, let's just eat the pizza instead. Now again, this might seem like no big deal to you, but if that's true, probably you wouldn't really be watching this series right? Like this stuff is hard. It's so stressful. We make ourselves crazy trying to abide by all these rules because we want to do the right thing. We want to be healthy. We want to, you know, take care of our bodies. But when we stress ourselves out that much, it doesn't help. And really now what I believe is eating that pizza and just going, okay, I'm going to give myself permission. I'm not going to judge myself. I'm not going to get stressed out. And tomorrow, you know, I'll listen to my body and see if I need a salad or maybe I want leftover pizza. Who knows? Right? But this was my mindfulness at work. It helped to me be okay with whatever is happening now. No stress needed. And in this way, mindfulness becomes a tool for stress management. All right, so I wanna finish this video just acknowledging gratitude and appreciation because I think it's relevant here. And I said at the beginning, we need to look back and appreciate ourselves and you know, see how far we've come. There's power in acknowledging our personal growth and what's good in our lives. And the science backs it. I'm, it's not just because like Alicia says it works. Um, one study actually found that gratitude practice not only predicted less loneliness, but also fewer physical health symptoms like sleep disturbances, headaches, respiratory infections, um, gastrointestinal problems. So a gratitude practice is one of the first tools I started using when I began turning inward and I still do it today. So I just simply write down three things I'm grateful for. Now, not out of scarcity. So not, you know, I should feel grateful because I have a job. That's not really gratitude, but rather out of abundance. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be, I'm really grateful for this cup of coffee or I'm grateful for coffee in general. This is on my gratitude list a lot. I'm grateful for my front yard. I'm grateful for the weather. I'm grateful for grocery delivery and coronavirus. You know, anything you're genuinely grateful for. Christian and I also share a gratitude practice each day together. And I also do an appreciation practice with him and on my own. So we share something we appreciate about the other person. It's a great opportunity to connect and, you know, be kind and just acknowledge each other. So it could be, I appreciate that you did the dishes. I appreciate that you made dinner. I appreciate that you texted my sister happy birthday. But also we share something that we appreciate about ourselves and this is so much harder. So try it, writing down one to three things that you appreciate about yourself, big or small. You know, some days it's, I appreciate that I exercised. I appreciate that I ate breakfast instead of skipping it. I appreciate that I called my mom, uh, got that task that I've been avoiding done. The gratitude can be hard at first too. You know, we often feel we're lacking so much or things are against us. So just start small, one thing per day. What goes along with gratitude and appreciation is self-compassion, which is very important and relevant to mindfulness. Remember, mindfulness is the present moment that is non-judgmental. So self-compassion is the antidote to judgment. It's caring for yourself and talking to yourself as you would a friend. I mean, would you tell your friend, you know, stop being so lazy and work out or you shouldn't eat that whole bag of Cheetos or you're gonna get fat? No, you wouldn't say that to your friend because you're a good human being. But we talk to ourselves that way. Studies have actually shown self-compassionate people are more likely to exercise, eat healthy, sleep well, and manage stress. This all points to inner wisdom 
first. Once we have that foundation of inner wisdom, then we can expand out. Before we worry about all the nutrition and details, get the foundation down. I talk about this so much more in my Mind Over Meal Prep course. This is the last week to sign up if you want a deeper dive into mindfulness and to sustainably approach meal prep. So tell me in the comments, what are your food freedom wins? You know, what is a moment where you looked back and you're like, wow, I'm so proud that I did that. And if you think this video or series is relevant to a friend, I hope that you will share it on your social media. Thank you so much for being here. I'll be back tomorrow. And remember, it's all a matter of mind over munch.